My daughter Emery's piano recital is later this afternoon at the United Church in Naples, which is a beautiful, beautiful facility. And yesterday, Saturday, it was interesting as I was spending time with Emery, we, she went to her horse riding, uh, we played some board games, just basically a lot of family time yesterday. But you could tell as a parent that she was feeling some stress, uh, some pressure about something. And clearly it was this upcoming piano recital today on Sunday afternoon. And it's interesting what we learn as fathers and mothers, of course, is it's really important that we develop the skill of learning how to read what is happening in our in our homes, whether it's with our, <coughs> excuse me, our spouse, could be, uh, uh, could be something with our children, our grandchildren, whatever. Good morning. And it's something that I've developed as a coach, as a pro coach and amateur coach over the last 22 years. And it's something that all businessmen and entrepreneurs like yourself have developed, I have over the last 31 years, is reading people. And it's probably the most valuable skill we can have. And yesterday I was trying to figure out in the afternoon exactly what it was that was bothering Emery. She had a couple of un, un, uh, uncommon outbursts uh, at Krista. Uh, she just, you know, she just wasn't exactly herself because she is a very, 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 um, what would you say, balanced kid. There's not a lot of screaming. There's not a lot of, she's a deep thinker. Uh, she has great control of her emotions for a nine-year-old kid. And she was just having, you could just tell that she was stressed about her upcoming piano recital. So I asked myself that critical question that it's one of the principles I teach my world builders. When it comes to our family and there's stress and there's anxiety, um, you know, the question I always ask is what's important here? And what's important here is that, um, and, and I mean, I thought about it for a while. And last night, uh, after uh, I did Emery's reading, uh, Krista and I each, yeah, Krista does one night of reading before bed. I do the next night. We go back and forth. We're a, we're a team in that area where I read one night and she reads the other just before lights out and gratitude time with Emery. So last night after she brushed her teeth and she got ready for bed and we read a chapter of her favorite book, uh, I sat on the side of her bed and I talked about a principle that I've taught for many years in hockey coaching. And that is the hay is in the barn. And you may or may not be familiar with this saying or this metaphor, but it has long served me as a coach, as a father, as a husband. And it's a principle that I try to live by. And for my hockey players, I always taught it as a different principle where I said, hard practice equals fun games. If you work hard on Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, at hockey practice, you put in the time in the weight room, you eat the right foods, you do your visualization, you bust your ass on the ice, then Friday nights in front of hundreds and hundreds of people, the games are fun. Sunday afternoon games are fun because the hay is in the barn, you've put in the work. Hard practice equals fun games. And that's something that worked for us for the seven years that I coached in Perth, especially our 2019 team, who had a lot of alpha male players who put a lot of pronounced pressure on themselves when things didn't go exactly right. So I used to always talk about hard practice equals uh, fun games. 
So I saw a lot of this pronounced pressure for the first time yesterday with my daughter Emery and, and the behavior that was coming from it. And she's not in piano to put pressure in her life or to be the next great pianist or anything like that. She's in it because like the game of chess, piano is a wonderful development skill for your mind, for your spirit, for your soul, for your hands. And she enjoys it. She doesn't love it like some other things, but she enjoys it. So I think piano is something that's important for young children. But it's not something that she needs to be stressed about or feeling anxious about. So as I sat there last night on the edge of her bed, I always talk to her uh, just before she turns off the light. And I told her the metaphor of the hay is in the barn. And I had mentioned it earlier at dinner when we were sitting out by the pool. I said, you have nothing to even concern yourself with. I said, tomorrow is about fun. The recital is about nothing but fun. It's about being in the moment and just doing. It's no longer about thinking. Like the great Tim Grover says in Relentless and Winning, it's, it's just about doing. You know, uh, Michael Jordan didn't have to think in games. Kobe Bryant doesn't have to think in games. Sidney Crosby doesn't have to think in games because they put in the 40,000 hours of practice, the 40,000 shots, they've, 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 the hay is in the barn. And I explained to Emery, the hay in, is in the barn is of course a farming metaphor. And it means that the hay has been cut, the hay has been raked, and the hay has been baled and put in the barn. And it means that most of the hard work has been done. And now for the rest of the season, which is usually the fall and winter in farming, it's now about bringing that hay out of the barn each day and feeding it to the cattle and the horses and the sheep. But what it really means is that most of the work is done for now. The work is never done, but it's most of it's done for now. The hay is in the barn. I remember uh, the great Jimmy Johnson when he was uh, building the Dallas Cowboys and uh, he made the infamous Herschel Walker trade which catapulted the Cowboys from a one in 15 team over the next handful of years to back-to-back -to -back Super Bowl champions. And that, that trade in itself was a big piece because the draft picks that he got by trading Herschel to the Minnesota Vikings, he drafted players like Troy Aikman, he drafted players like Emmett Smith, Hall of Fame careers to follow, and back-to-back -back Super Bowls. And I remember in his book, Jimmy Johnson saying to his team before Super Bowl number one and Super Bowl victory number two, all week long, the theme was the hay is in the barn. In other words, they have trained for 12 months. They've done the work in the weight room. They've eaten the right foods. They've done the mental training, the visualization. They've drafted the right players. They've uh, hired the right free agents. Uh, they've done the video, they've done it all. And they were, he was talking, he was referencing Super Bowl week, the two weeks between the, the conference championship and the Super Bowl. And he said, the hay is already in the barn. He says, this is a week of walkthroughs. This is a week of resting. This is a week of spending time with loved ones. And uh, if you don't have it done by now, you just don't have it done. The hay, is already in the barn. The preparation is done. And I explained to Emery how I asked her a question. I said, what's the hardest week of practice you've ever had? When was your best week of practice in terms of practicing the piano? And she looked up at me, she was lying in her bed and she said, this past week, she goes, I have never practiced harder than I have this last week. She said, there was only one day where I didn't practice you know, really, really hard. And I said, okay, and how were the results? And she said, well, I improved every single day. She's playing one song. So over and over and over again. Then she has to introduce herself. She has to stand up before she plays. And this all takes like three minutes, right? And she has to introduce herself as Emery McLean and what she's playing. So when I heard about this earlier in the week, it reminded me to a, back to a mentor 
who when I was Emery's age, she taught me the power of public speaking. You know that public speaking is the number two fear for most people behind dying, actually dying. There's death as fear number one and public speaking, believe it or not, as, as number two. And if you've ever been a part of Toastmasters or any of that stuff, that's how they sell that stuff. People have a, just a, a gigantic fear of ever being called upon to say a prayer or to toast or to, you know, speak about something. Uh, it's just a really great fear for a lot of people. So one of the things that Krista and I have decided as parents when, when Emery was born nine years ago is that one of the skills we are going to demand that she develop is the power of public speaking, the ability, whether practiced or not practiced, to be able to stand up with poise and confidence and speak to audiences, whether it's three people or whether it's 3,000. And this is something that has served me so well in my life uh, because um, a lady by the name of Jean Newsom taught me and invested time in me into actual public speaking in elementary school. I did the, the contests every year. I would win my classroom. I would win the district. And then I would win, you know, and I would go through the Legion. The Legion would sponsor these. And every year we would write a speech and I would practice it 500 times and I would literally go through all the sectionals, all the regionals as far as I could writing this speech. And it wasn't about what I won or what I lost. It was about I became comfortable speaking in front of large groups, small groups, whatever it was. And I learned how to design speeches. I learned how to talk. And I can't think of anything that's been more valuable in terms of business, in terms of being a coach. I mean, how could I coach hockey if I can't speak? How can I run a company if I don't speak? How can I be a consultant if I can't stand up and speak? So today is another example for Emery to gain this experience of standing up and speaking. But it's interesting, I made her do her introduction where she stands up and introduces herself and what she is doing I was making her do that 25 times per day, times five days. So do the math. So she can literally stand up there now and say her name and say what she's going to play. And then she sits down, takes a deep breath and plays her three minute song. And what I emphasized last night when I was talking to her just before lights out is I said, the hay is in the barn, sweetheart. The hay is in the barn. You've done the work, you're confident, I said, when you get up on Sunday morning, which is today, I said, I want you to play that song one more time. I want you to stand up. I want you to introduce yourself. I want you to say the song like we've, we've worked on all week. I want you to sit down. I want you to take a deep breath. I want you to put a big smile on your face. And I said, I want you to play. I want you to smile and play with passion, with, with and have fun, enjoy and be present. Sit down, smile and play. And that's what she did today, this morning. I could hear her. Uh, she got up, she announced herself, she announced the, uh, the song and she sat down. As far as I know, she took a deep breath and she smiled and she played. And I asked her once I was talking to her later, I said, how was that first one? And she said, Fantastic, fantastic. So I said, that's it for the practice for today. I said, you're done, you're ready, the hay is in the barn. And of course, she remembers the, the uh, metaphor from the night before, because I'm sure that was in her subconscious. She practiced just before bed, which is the way to do anything, a speech or a recital or playing tennis or phone scripting, whatever you want your subconscious to work on. For eight hours, all you have to do is run through it perfectly the night before and then your subconscious is going to work on that all night that's a superpower that most people don't use um, so she did that as well and she woke up refreshed she went through it one time and that's it now the rest of the day here she's been biking she's been swimming and we're going to get ready we're going to get showered and put on our nice clothes and we're going to head over to the naples united church and uh, it's time to have fun and I emphasized that to her last night when I was talking to her at bed 
about how I did it with the Blue Wings, how hard practice equals fun games. How doing the hard things, putting the hay in the barn, makes these things so much more enjoyable. Doesn't matter if it's a math test, doesn't matter if you're writing a book, doesn't matter if you're hiring a person, you know when you're cramming. And when you're cramming, it's just a bad habit. It's poor time management. And I've, I've, been, a, I've, been, a, I've been as guilty of this as anybody throughout my, my career. But I enjoy things now more because I do the daily. I have the three things that I have to do every day. So I'm not cramming. Even when I wrote my, most, my brand new book, which is available at nobullbook.com, I wasn't cramming anymore. I wasn't stressed, I wasn't anxious, because I had done the daily work each and every day. And it's the same, I'm done with cramming in my career. I just do the two or three little things every day that then I'm not into cramming. It's just about I'm putting the hay in the barn every single day. So I look forward to uh, her recital today, like I said, it's, it's about her becoming even more comfortable speaking and performing in front of other people. She's done quite a, quite a lot of it so far in her young life. And uh, just teaching that important principle of putting the hay in the barn. Like doing the private work before the public victory. And that's what the late, great Stephen Covey used to say. Private, private victories precede public victories. You need to do the work in private to enjoy the fruits of your labor in public. I used to uh, get all the guys together on a Wednesday night practice, and I every week I would remind them after two hours of skating, endless skating, I would always bring the team together for a final stretch at center ice. And on a Wednesday night, it could, it's absolutely freezing in the middle of the winter, January or February, and there's not a single person sitting in the, in the stands in our rink and it's eerily quiet and it's only the lights are on the ice and it's dark it's like a dark gymnasium it's like the almost like a dark baseball field just the infield lights on and i would always tell my players private victories precede public victories and i would always remind them to look up in the stands and who do you see well, we don't see anybody, coach. There's no mums, there's no dads, there's no grandma, no grandpa, no friends, no girlfriends, no nobody. And I would remind them that, you know, when you put the hay in the barn and you do hard practice equals fun games. And I would remind them to have fun, okay, on Friday night and have fun on Sunday because the games belong to players. Recitals belong to players. Chess matches belong to the players. Football games belong to the players. T-ball games belong to the players. When these kids or athletes or pro athletes, when they do the work, I always say practice. Practice to me belonged to the coaches. They had to do what I said, and it was repetition is the mother of skill because perfect practice makes permanent. Perfect practice makes permanent. So really, the, pra the coaches are, are highly involved in the practice, but the games and the recitals and the spotlight should always, always belong to the man in the arena or the woman in the arena, the people who have put the hay in the barn. So that's my uh, message today. It's a personal story from something that we're doing today with the piano recital. And in conclusion, it's interesting because my daughter woke up this morning refreshed. She woke up like her old self. She played through her song one time. And we've been out biking, we've been out walking. And like I said, I said, You're, the hay is in the barn. You don't need to be playing that song anymore. And we're gonna go there tonight. And as all parents, we're gonna, listen, we're gonna sit for two hours and listen for three minutes because I think her song is about three minutes long. And we're gonna be fully present in one of these amazing memories, a amazing memory, especially for a parent. And there's not gonna be any stress or anxiety. It doesn't make any difference either way because she's learned that preparation, preparation equals opportunity, the hay is in the barn. She's already done the hard practice. I'm gonna remind her one more time when we're in the vehicle that it's about smiling and having fun today.
It's about smiling and having fun and being fully present. We don't want to go through our lives where we're so flustered and we're so stressed and we're so anxious that we don't remember anything. You know, oh my God, I, and that's when we don't do the work. So if we do the work every daily, daily, I'm such a proponent of the daily work. That's why pounding the rock works. That's why pounding the rock works. How do you write a, how do you write a book, Michael? I'm like one page a day, one or two pages a day, that's it. 15 minutes a day is how books get written. How do you get in the best shape of your life? I'm like 75 Hindu squats a day, 75, six minutes a day, every day. And that's why I'm such a fan of the no days off, just every day chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, making a bet, the best version of yourself. Weekends make us weak, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And that's where real fulfillment and life balance and peace of mind and happiness, that's where all that stuff is hidden, is every day becoming a better version of yourself and secondly, serving others. Those are the two things that Tony Robbins said 30 years ago and they stuck with me above and beyond anything else is a life of happiness and satisfaction comes from two things. Number one, constant and never ending improvement. That means becoming a better version of yourself every day. And the second thing is serve those who you've been called to serve. You decide that. Who can you help? You're doing this. Who can you serve? Who have you been called to serve? And think about those two things. Get better every day and serve others and you'll have an incredible, incredible life of significance. That's it for me. Put your hay in the barn. Make sure the hay is in the barn so that you can smile and enjoy these, uh, these events in our lives that really matter that we're present. So if you have not bought a copy of my Not Everybody's Cup of Whiskey book, How to Not Get Your Ass Kicked in Business and in Life, you can correct that mistake by going to nobullbook.com. The link is below. Uh, you can also sign up for uh, my waiting list for my next world building coaching program. And you can do that at the link below. That's badassmillionaire.com slash apply. And also you can check out a, one of my webinars. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. Again, it's not everybody's cup of Jim Beam, but it's at uh, badasswebinar.com. Badasswebinar.com. I think Mark will put that link below also. And you can watch that. That's my 10 secrets to building a badass millionaire world. You wanna build a new world where you transform your entire life, your business, your marriage, your relationship, your mental and physical health? Watch that webinar, my 10 advanced insider secrets for building your own brand new badass world. And that again is at badasswebinar.com. Uh, that's it, here endeth the lesson, yours, uh, Relentless is going to go home and shave and shower and uh, we are going to that piano recital and then after Krista has booked us our Sunday night family dinner since we've been in Ma Naples we've actually been going out to these beautiful restaurants every Sunday night as a family no technology no phones none of that stuff and we go out on a different restaurant patio and we just sit and we have a meal and we talk and we talk about our upcoming week. And tonight we'll be celebrating Emery's Hay in the Barn uh, piano recital. And then it'll be time to get ready to take on a brand new week of school and everything else. So that's it for, uh, for me, Michael McLean, uh, noblebook.com. If you like my daily videos, I do them every single day. I do them by myself. They're mini adventures. I don't have anybody helping me. I don't take any notes. I turn on the camera and I talk. Uh, sometimes it's stuff you're interested in. Maybe sometimes it's, it's not something you're interested in. But if you'd like to subscribe, you can do that below. I do them 365 days a year uh, on a broken iPhone 7. They're not edited. I don't do takes. I don't do anything. Now I'll send this to Mark Andre and that's it. Uh, they're uncut, they're uncensored, and sometimes they're politically incorrect, but that's the way that goes, and I don't care either way. So you can subscribe. I appreciate any comments, any other things you would like me to talk about or address. 
uh, I'm happy to do that as well. And you can do that in the comments below. That's it for today. We are off. The hay is in the barn. We are off to a piano recital, a badass piano recital at the Naples United Church. The McLeans are taking a road trip. Two words that change my life. Two words that can certainly change yours. Be relentless.